Hello, introduction to business. Welcome to chapter 17 on understanding accounting and financial information. And just to get this chapter started, when I was getting my business degree, this is something that I always struggled with, with which is understand accounting. And I actually don't mind math at all, but there's just something about you know, understanding what, what the difference in current and fixed is and what the difference between a debit and a credit and which accounts go where. And we're not gonna be necessarily doing that in this class because this is an introduction to business. We're just introducing you to these topics. Although if any of you are going on to transfer from Las Positas as a business major, or you plan on transferring and then getting a four-year degree in accounting or in business, not even accounting, just any business, most business degrees, including the one I went into marketing, I actually ended up taking two accounting classes at community college and two in my undergraduate and two in my MBA, even though my made, my discipline within business was marketing. So it is good. And the reason they do that is it's, it's important to have a general understanding of accounting because it is, they say it's the language of business, but the way I interpret that is even though I'm in marketing, if I can look at an accounting statement or accounting uh, data, I can make sense out of it. I know what I'm looking at. And um, it is important to understand these these different forms and these different uh, these ledgers because as a manager, when you get into a management position, you're going to want to uh, see whether you're doing good or bad because that's basically what this this analysis allows when an accountant shows you, you know, this, how much we're making this, how much we're losing, we're spending this much over here. We're spending this much over there. It really does paint a picture of how, uh, either financially well or poor a company is doing. So while, you know, me personally, I was never a fan of it. Once I understood why it's important to understand the basics of accounting, I was more involved and I, and I took the time to, to break it down and understand it more at a fundamental level. And so we're going to do a really brief overview of accounting here. Now, what is the definition of accounting? The recording, classifying, summarizing, and interpreting of financial events and transactions to provide management and other interest and others that are interested, uh, to give, provide them that, that information to make good decisions. Um, so you might be wondering, well, who, who wants this information? Well, the management within the company wants it, the CEO and people above, they want to see how well the company's doing. Are we making money or are we losing money? Pretty simple idea, but that's what accounting can provide. They can actually look at the exact numbers and see whether you're turning a profit or whether you're not. They can see where you're spending the most money or where you're making the most money. They're that good. Now, you might be wondering, well, why would somebody who doesn't work for the company be interested? Well, that's where people, when we play the stock market game in this, in this, in this class, this, when a company goes public, meaning they are now on the stock exchange, not all companies are public, but when a company goes public and they go out on the stock exchange, and the reason they do that is companies want to be public because they can raise more money by selling part of their company, right? So it allows them to sell part of their company to make, to raise money to then spend the money on uh, buying new buildings and expanding their business. So it's in a lot of companies' best interest to go public. And so when they go public, it is now the law that public companies have to publish publicly their accounting information to the public to be transparent. So if I wanna go out and buy Apple, I can go look at Apple's financial statements and see whether they're doing good or bad, and also see where they're spending their money so that I can make the right choice whether I wanna buy Apple or whether I think I don't wanna buy them. So it provides me with information that they're gonna be more transparent about their, um, you know, their financial performance. And we're gonna get into that as we move forward. So um, governments want to know that to make sure that you're not cheating. You know, they want to make sure creditors want to know that people who lend you money, they want to know how if you're doing well or not so they can get paid back. Um, and then investors is huge, right? People who invest in stocks want to know your accounting. So let's not get into the weeds here, but these are some of the documents that an accountant might work on. And depending on what kind of accounting you're doing, 
um, this, is, this would be a typical day. They're, they're taking documents coming in, they're processing those documents, making sure they're going to the right place, and then that will produce those forms that we talked about that management and outside people wanna see. So it's a lot of data entry, cataloging, things like that. Um, and so this is what, if you really broke it down, their, their process, they take a document, they write it in the right spot, they then post it to the correct category. Number four, they uh, look at it, they take a trial balance of that, of all that money they've just calculated. Then they, they make these three sheets here. If you notice, there's a balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, the three primary financial statements. And then um, you can analyze those statements and offer recommendations or um, use it to make better decisions. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the three main statements that we saw here. Remember, balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flow, cash flows, same three here. A summary of all the transactions that have occurred over a particular period. Okay, and when I say particular period, typically um, these are done quarterly, so four times a year. The accounting department or who's ever the accountant for the company will be, will be uh, you know, updating these three sheets four times a year, for example, if they were doing it quarterly. If you do it annually, it'd be once a year. Um, depends whatever the company uh, you know, set it for, but it's typically quarterly. Um, the fundamental accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And uh, this is one of the fundamental rules of accounting that all of your assets, all of the things that are worth some sort of form of cash, whether it be a business, uh, you know, or a, or a building um, to, um, you know, anything you can physically touch to anything that's worth money to the company should equal money owed and money in the bank, owner's equity. And uh, we're not gonna dive into that, but your book will help you with that in the homework, getting a general understanding that a company needs to be balanced. If a company is not balanced, something's wrong. So it's a really easy, uh, thing to look at and say whether or not you know you miss some money somewhere there's something missing there's something going on so like I said accountants they really right off the bat they could see if there's something wrong with the company if somebody's stealing money or if someone's not reporting something or maybe you maybe you thought you made a million dollars but you actually really look at the number and you actually only made half a million dollars the accounting uh, division within the company would be able to spot that almost immediately as they were recording and, and seeing what was happening within a company. Okay, so we talked about that. Here's a question. Service businesses like dog groomers rely on the same set of financial statements as manufacturers like Ford and retailers like Macy's. What are some of the assets and liabilities a typical service business like this one would carry on its balance sheet? So let me just give you two examples and maybe you can think of some examples yourself. You can pause the video here if you wanna try it yourself. But uh, what are some assets? Well, a dog groomer um, they and Macy's, they both have a retail store typically, right? So they have, you know, rent or, or they own the building in which they're using. The dog groomer has supplies like brushes and aluminum foil to dye <laughs> the dog's the dog's hair. Um, it has uh, like probably little chairs and little leashes to hold the, the animal still while, you know, they, you know, do any kind of grooming, cutting and shampooing and whatever else they're doing. Macy's has the same thing. It, within the Macy's store, they have displays and mirrors and um, cash registers. These are all assets. These are things that the company has to buy in order to run the business. But at the same time, if they an asset holds a value, if they ever wanted to get rid of it, they could sell it for some sort of profit or some sort of capital. Um, and then the liability is something that you owe later. And so a liability for a dog groomer could be a loan. Maybe the dog groomer had to pull out a loan in order to you know buy all this equipment. Same thing with Macy's. They do they get debt as well. Just like you all out there get student loan debt, companies will get debt in order to help finance their operations. So sh this particular dog groomer may have got uh, debt to help pay her payroll or to help buy equipment. Um, those would be liabilities. So it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in, whether you're Macy's or a dog groomer, you could have uh, liabilities, You know, things that you owe money to. 
Okay, assets, economical resources, things of value owned by a firm. Items can be tangible or intangible. And we talked about this with buildings, leashes, cash registers, desks, chairs, microphones, everything, right? Anything that that is a, you know, an asset. And then it says intangible because assets can also be like a logo, uh, intellectual property, um, things that you can't necessarily touch but they are worth some uh, uh, value, as they're saying here. Liquidity is the ease with which an asset can be converted into cash. So this is a really important concept in business in general. We probably talked about it in the past, but let's make sure we have a good understanding of this. So let me ask you this question. What is more liquid? Uh, the house that I'm in right now or a dollar bill? The answer, would be the dollar bill. It's the most, it's one of the most liquid forms of capital. This house, if I wanted to turn it into cash, I would have to hire a realtor or maybe not. I'd have to list my house. Then I would have to find a buyer for it. Then I'd have to wait for those funds to come in. So it could take a little bit of time. So liquidity is, is the ease at which an asset can be turned into cash. So let's add another thing. Um, how about um, this ball? What is more liquid, this ball or the, or the house? And the answer would be this ball because it's way easier for me to just list this ball on Craigslist and find a buyer than it is for me to list this house and, and then uh, you know sell it. So it's this kind of hierarchy of assets to cash. Um, so within, let's go back to the dog grooming. Um, there's going to be certain assets that are going to be more liquid than other assets. Income statement, the financial statement that shows a firm's profit after costs, expenses, and taxes. Let's not get into the weeds here. Let's actually look at a real company in a second. Here's a question. Most businesses incur operating expenses include rent, salaries, utilities, supplies, and insurance. What are some of the likely operating expenses for companies like Starbucks? Well, right, their employees. Supplies would be cups, milk barista machines, you know, espresso machines, insurance, you know, hazard insurance, falling insurance, um, many different types of insurance, rent on the actual uh, companies, lots, it costs a lot of money. Cash flow, the difference in cash coming in and cash going out. And you might be wondering, well, isn't that what we've been talking about this whole time? Well, not necessarily, um, because cash flow has to do with actual dollars. So for example, um, sometimes you don't get paid up front. For example, back to Starbucks. When they buy their cups, and I have Pete's coffee here, but when they buy their cups, they're probably buying these a thousand at a time. And the company that supplies them with these cups um, usually will give them 30 days to pay. For those of you who, who haven't, you know, run a business before, a lot of times your suppliers, the people selling you milk, selling you cups, selling you coffee beans, they will often provide you the product first, then they'll send you a bill and then they will ask you to pay that bill within 30 days. So let's talk about cash flow. So the way Starbucks makes money is a customer comes in and they order coffee beans or they order a coffee and then they pay you cash or credit card. And then now all of a sudden that cash or credit card gave you money. You now have that cash in your hand. But like the coffee cup you used, you still haven't uh, paid for it. Because remember the coffee, the supplier is giving you 30 days to pay. So the cash flow in this example I'm giving you with the coffee and the cups, you're actually having more cash coming in sooner and you're having cash leaving later, thus giving you a positive cash flow throughout the month until the end of the month when some of that money leaves in the form of paying your employees, right? Employees get paid typically every two weeks and in forms of paying your suppliers. So sometimes you'll have cash coming in at a faster rate than cash leaving because you pay people out, you pay the salaries, you pay the suppliers, at a later date. But the, 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 the reverse could also happen that you might have to pay, like for example, airlines 
they have to pay for airplanes and that's a lot of money. So they pay them on debt, right? $25 million, $50 million. They pay for the airplanes up front and then they have the cash coming in from ticket sales as they sell tickets. So the cash flow in these different scenarios uh, can change. And so if you don't have cash, how are you gonna pay for stuff? So the idea of you wanna focus, you wanna see cash coming in versus cash going out. That is the idea of cash flow. And there are a couple examples for you. The last uh, concept in this chapter is all on ratio analysis, but let's dive into some examples here. So here we have Yahoo Finance. You know, that's probably the one thing I use Yahoo for. And I wanna go to Chipotle. I love Chipotle. I think they make a great product. Wow, they're worth a lot of money. But I wanted to show you first that you can go over here to financials and what do you see here at the bottom or at the right? They move this all the time. Here you go. Where I'm highlighting right above me, you can see that they have the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. So balance sheet, are they balanced? Do uh, total a do total assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity? Yes, they do. If you add up these two numbers, they equal this. If you add up these two numbers, they equal this. This is different years, by the way. So this is last year, the year before, the year before, the year before. So just looking at one year, yeah, they're balanced. Cash flow. So do they have a positive cash flow in operating? Yes, but not necessarily in investing and financing. But when you see their end position, they're actually net positive, which is good. That means that they have a positive cash flow, they have enough cash. If it's negative, that means they might have to go and get a loan or ask somebody for money to borrow because they, they need more money than they're able to produce. And then income statement, we can see, now remember, a lot of my students don't see this up here, all numbers are in thousands. So while this says, mil, if you look at this number as it sits here, that's millions, right? They made $5 million. No. Chipotle. Oh, that's, this is TTM, the current moment. Let's look at last year. In 2019, Chipotle made $5 billion, $586 million, $369,000 in revenue. That is wild. Um, and then you can see how much it cost them to operate. It cost them about $675 million of operating expenses. Um, you can really get into this. This is not an accounting course. I simply wanted to show you that what we're learning in this chapter is used in the real world everywhere. And that when you understand these statements, you can pick any company. I picked Chipotle, but we can pick any company and look at their financial information that, that's publicly traded and it'll give us a good idea. I know when I see these numbers that Chipotle is doing a really good job. They're making a lot of money. When you pay $9 for your burrito, they're selling a lot of burritos. They're selling a lot of bowls and uh, they're doing very well. They're even beating the last year's numbers, even with COVID, pretty impressive. So back into our slides in, in, the, in the book, we talk about liquidity, leverage, profitability, the current ratio. They talk about the debt to owner's equity ratio earnings per share, return on sales. If we go over here, we go to Chipotle, we click on statistics. If you go over here to scroll down, you have your financial highlights. They actually produce this return on assets. They're at 3.69%. Return on equity, they're at 13.84%. Um, gross profit margin, 1.9 billion. Uh, diluted earnings per share, 8.36. Uh, total debt to equity ratio, 1.3%. 171.19, their current ratio, 1.51. So we, although we're learning this in the book, these are all measurements that investors use, that CEOs use, that uh, governments use to see the, 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 the current situation, the performance of a company. And so going back to the slides, you could see that, um, you know, what these ratios do but uh, we use these all the time to see the financial performance of different companies. Now, again, remember, it has to be a publicly traded company. 
for you to be able to access this information. If a company is private or it's like a small business, you, you do not have to publicly post this data. So there's chapter 17. It is a doozy. There's a lot to absorb. If you were able to get even a sliver, you're doing great. This is just an introduction class to introduce you to some of these accounting concepts. You're going to have plenty of time in your time at Las Positas and if you transfer to really dive into these topics as you will probably have to take accounting 1A, 1B, and then as I mentioned further in your career. It's just like math and once you learn how to multiply and divide, a lot of what you're seeing here is just taking those fundamental concepts and adding one extra step or two extra steps and you can always go back to the fundamentals. So that's why if you even get a little of this information, you're doing great and it'll just continue to build off of that. Um, so with that, if you do have further questions, I'm more than happy to help you. Please come to my office hours or leave a question in the discussion and uh, we'll see you on the next chapter.